We're in Matsushima. It's known as being one of the three most scenic places in Japan. There's a bay with about, I think it's over 260 tiny islands inside the bay. And they've all got fir trees on and it's very picturesque. I've been looking forward to editing this video as it was one of my favorite places from the trip. We're gonna have a look around Matsushima and take a boat trip around the bay. But the best part is actually coming up in next week's video. So subscribe if you wanna catch it. And there's new Japan videos every Thursday. Matsushima is about half an hour on the train from Sendai, which is only about an hour and 45 minutes from Tokyo on the bullet train. It's really quite accessible and easy to get to, and I'd really recommend it if you're planning a trip. It was famous because a Japanese poet called Basho wrote a poem about it, and that's about all I know about Japanese poetry. <laughs> I only know about this because it was in my Japanese audio course for some reason. Basho is a Japanese poet and a master of haiku. He's said to have written a haiku that goes something like Matsushima, Ah, Matsushima, Matsushima, because he was so lost for words at how beautiful it is. It's kind of a silly haiku, and there is some debate about whether he actually wrote it at all. And I think it was in the 1600s or the olden times, it was um, designated as one of these three most scenic places. And then more recently, they did a new three most scenic places, and it wasn't included in that one. <laughs> they switched them all up. The other three originals, the other two of the three originals were Itsukushima Shrine in Miyajima, which we went to. There's a video about that one on my channel. And Amano Hashidate, which is a sand bar. So there's like a sort of bridge of sand with the ocean on either side. The first place I mentioned, Itsukushima Shrine, is in Miyajima, which is near Hiroshima. It really is beautiful. I absolutely loved it there. There's a Tori gate in the water, and when the tide's out, you can walk right up to it. And there's wild deer. The second of Japan's scenic views, Amano Hashidate, is in Kyoto Prefecture. The traditional way of viewing the sandbar is to stand on a bench, bend over, and look at it from between your legs. When you're upside down, it's said to look like a dragon going up to the sky. I'm going to try this Mont Blanc drink from the vending machine, it's a hot one. This chestnut Mont Blanc drink is really sweet. It's warm and it tastes like caramelly, like hot chocolate but caramelly and with nut flavour instead. Very sweet. All the hot drinks for the vending machine seem to be really sweet. That red bridge over there is the bridge to Fukura Island that you can walk across. And this here is Godaido Temple. We were saying how strange it is, there's all these little islands, though you don't see this sort of formations in many places. And we were wondering if they were formed by erosion or if they pushed up from the sea. It's just really unusual. First, we're going to see the islands from the water on a boat trip. Here's our boat, we're going for a cruise around the bay. We're going on a boat cruise around the bay where you can see nicer views of all the islands, all 260 islands. I don't know if we're going to see all of them. <laughs> and because we've got lots of yen left, we've gone for first class upstairs. Ooh. Here's where we're going on a round trip around the bay. So we're going to see all these islands. They also had one-way trips going from Matsushima to Shiogama, which is the next sort of major station along. We're doing the Matsushima to Matsushima round trip. It was 1500 yen each for our ticket and it's going to be 50 minutes long and then it was an extra 600 yen to go upstairs to first class. There was just an announcement saying there have been cases where seagulls have taken people's mobile phones <laughs> to call all their bird friends. As we went along, there was a commentary in Japanese and English explaining the names of the main islands and what they're supposed to look like. Please look at your left. The strange island in the form of someone sitting is the famous Neojima. We went out on deck for a better view. It was pretty breezy out there. This is February and it's only about 4 degrees centigrade, although it feels warm to us because we've just come from Hokkaido where it was about minus 10 degrees C and absolutely freezing. 
Some people live on these islands over here. Most of these are too small to have anything on. And we saw one a minute ago that had just one tree on it. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, there's a lot of fishing nets in the water here. Matsushima is known for oysters, so I don't know if it's that or some other sort of seafood. Some of the islands are really tiny. I think these look like some of the inspiration for Pandora in Avatar. The floating islands. There's some caves in this one. Can you imagine sailing into them in a little boat? Big mountain over there in the distance. I find it really strange how you can often see mountains in the background in Japan. It's so different from at home. The large island is Sabu Sawaji. There's just one tree on the top of this one. Lonely. <laughs> the island with the houses that you can see is Nonoshima. They are an elementary and junior high school on the island and students mm -hmm. commute to school by boat. The large bamboo poles assembled into a scaffold shape are farms for Matsushima's famous oysters. To set the mood on the way back, they played a retro Japanese song about Matsushima Bay. There's a lot of the islands you can see from the boat that you can't see from the land, and the whole thing covers a much larger area than I expected. They said it's about 12 or 14 kilometers across. It's hard to get a good picture of the whole thing in one go, but they said there are four vantage points where you can see a view of all 260 islands. There was the, the gorgeous view, the beautiful view, the dynamic view, and the mysterious view, depending where you're looking at it from. I didn't go to any of these viewpoints, but I think they give you a better overview of the whole bay. Going between the islands on the boat, you get some beautiful views, but you don't really feel like you've seen the whole thing. Because it's cold and windy, we've come inside for ice cream. <laughs> I've got Zinda, which is a local thing around Sendai. It's edamame ice cream. I was very tempted by the black sesame because that's my favourite, but I thought I'd try the local speciality. It tastes a bit nutty, actually, in a way. It's kind of like vanilla, but with the aftertaste of edamame and the greenness of edamame. This may look like a mini Japanese castle, and it's called Matsushima Castle, but it's actually an observation deck. This building behind me is Godaido. It's, I think it's a temple, and inside it's got some statues that only come out every 33 years. <laughs> I think that's the thing they have at some temples and shrines in Japan. They have special things that they only bring out very, very rarely. So it's highly unlikely they'll be out at the moment, <laughs> but we could be lucky, who knows. I heard about this idea in the book Lost Japan by Alex Kerr. It's a true story. The author was staying at a temple and when he arrived, the monks said, oh, you must come and see our Buddha statue. So we went to his room first to freshen up. When he came back later that evening, the monk said, oh, how lucky you are to be here today to see the Buddha statue. And he said, well, actually, I was planning on seeing it in the morning. And it turns out it's only brought out for one day every 500 years and he'd missed it. So if you get the chance to see something like that in Japan, don't pass it up. Godaido is a temple that was originally built in the year 807. The current building's from the 1600s. There's three red bridges going over to Godaido. Oh, it's like the river's dried up there. This bridge has gaps so you can see the water below. Originally, it was to increase your focus and concentration as you went into the temple. It's also called a matchmaking bridge because people would hold hands as they went across. <laughs> can we fall in? You couldn't fall in, or could you? <laughs> wow! <laughs> There's a lovely view across here across to the long red bridge that goes across to Fukurashima. Fukurashima. The temple building was red, but the paint's all worn away now. I think it looks good in this natural colour. 
no statues today is <laughs> not a big surprise. Today isn't once every 33 years. They'll next be displayed in the year 2039. So if this video and YouTube are still around then, make sure you plan a visit. While we were there, the sun came out and the views started to look a lot more beautiful. Just look at the sparkling water. As you might know, Japan's prone to natural disasters and here's a sign to the nearest tsunami evacuation area one kilometre away. In the great tsunami and earthquake in 2011, Matsushima did suffer some damage, but because of all the islands in the bay, it sort of protected it and broke the water as it came in. I saw some pictures of the next town along, the next major station at Shiogami, and that did look quite bad there. If you're coming to Japan, there is always a possibility there could be an earthquake or a tsunami even, but it's not something you need to worry about overly because they don't happen that often and people are prepared for it here. Everyone around you will know what to do. I've been here when there's been very minor earthquakes and no one seemed to hardly bat an eyelid, <laughs> but they, they don't happen all the time either, so you don't need to overly worry about it. I hope you enjoyed this look around Matsushima, the boat trip, Godaido Temple and Edamame ice cream. As I said, the best is yet to come. Next time we'll be exploring Fukurajima Island, which was my favourite part and I really started to see why this is one of Japan's top three scenic views, or used to be. I'll see you next week on Thursday.